This is an experiment in which we're going to investigate some of the factors that affect reaction rates. We're going to start with what's called the iodine clock reaction. All we really need to know at this point is that there is a solution A that contains iodate ions, IO3-, and solution B contains bisulfide ions and acid and starch. The main thing we need to realize is that when the reaction is finished, elemental iodine or I2 will accumulate and the starch will turn blue. So basically when the reaction is finished, the contents of the test tube will turn blue. If you want more information on the iodine clock reaction, just Google it and it'll give you all the reactions and everything like that. So what we're going to do in this experiment is we're going to vary the concentration of IO3- in one of the test tubes. You can see the values here. And we're going to measure the time it takes for the blue color to appear. Again, realize that the shorter the time it takes to turn blue, the faster the reaction rate. So let's look at some of the experiments now. Let's try 0 0.001 molar. That was about 22 seconds before it started turning blue. Point zero zero two molar. About nine seconds that time. This time we'll try 0 0.004 molar. About 5.12 seconds. 0 0.005 molar. About four this time. Point zero zero six molar. About four thirteen. Now try point zero zero seven molar. About three point six eight seconds. Here's point zero zero eight molar. Gained about three seconds. Now we have 0 0.009 molar IO3. Start. Stop. This time it's about 2.56. Now we can put in the results of the experiment. There's the reaction times there for each of the concentrations. Time and rate are inversely related. The shorter the time, the faster the rate. So the rate in this reaction can be calculated using what's called reciprocal or the inverse of time. We don't have mass or anything that we measured, so for rate, what we'll use is seconds to the negative one or one over second which is a reciprocal of a time unit. So we'll take the 
reciprocals of all of these times and put them in this column here, which we'll call the rate column. Doing that, we get these numbers here. Now we'll look at the results on a graph. Here's the concentration of iodate on this axis, and this is the rate, which is reciprocal time, on this axis here. So you can see that as the concentration of IO3 increases, the rate generally increases too. Next, we're going to look at the effect of the nature of the reactants on rate. We're going to start with some purple solution called acidified permanganate, which is MnO4- with H+. And we're going to react it with a fairly simple ion like Fe2+, and see how fast the reaction is. In this experiment, we're going to put some purple KMnO4 solution into a solution of FeSO4, which is the source of the Fe2 plus ion. This solution has been acidified. We'll see how long it takes for the purple color to disappear as we add it drop by drop. Let's shake it up a little bit. And you can see the purple color disappears quite quickly. So we can record that in a little table here that the Fe2 plus with the acidified MnO4 is a fast reaction. Now we're going to add the acidified permanganate, the MnO4 and H plus, to a more complex ion. This ion is the oxalate ion C2O4, negative 2. And we'll see how fast that reaction is. Now we're going to add some of the purple KMnO4 to a solution of sodium oxalate, Na2C2O4. This is the source of the oxalate ion, C2O4. This has also been acidified. Let's put in five drops of the KMnO4. Let's give it a shake. And we'll leave it sit for a while. See how long it takes the purple color to disappear. As you can see, about three minutes after we started the timer, the color is still purple. Okay, at about six minutes, the color is still purple. I'm going to go for lunch. You can see after about 12 minutes, it's finally changed color. Quite a slow reaction. So this reaction was quite slow. It's well marked as slow. Can you come up with any suggestions as to why the ion C2O4-2 would react so much more slowly than the Fe2 plus? Turn off the video and think about it a bit. Jot some things down. And then start again. Fe2 ions are really simple and there's no bonds that need to be broken before they can react so they're usually quite fast. If we look at the structure of the oxalate, the C2O4 ions, we see this. You'll notice between the two carbon atoms that there's a strong covalent bond. It takes a lot of energy to break this strong covalent bond between the two carbon atoms. A lot of energy and that results in taking more time. Since it takes more time, Reactions with the oxalate ion tend to be quite slow at room temperature. Now we're going to look at the effect of a catalyst on the reaction rate. 
As you recall, the reaction of C2O4 with acidified permanganate was really slow at room temperature when we didn't have a catalyst. Now we're going to add a catalyst, Mn2+, works as a catalyst for this reaction. So we're going to do the same reaction, this time with the catalyst, and see what happens with that. Let's try it. Now we're going to put some KMnO4 in a solution of sodium oxalate C2O4 with acid, and this time it has Mn2 plus as a catalyst. So let's put in five drops. And we'll give it a little shake. You see the color almost immediately changes to yellow. And that's a color change. So now we can mark in FAST for the catalyst. Now we're going to have a look at the effect of temperature on reaction rate. The reaction of acidified MnO4 with oxalate ion was quite slow at room temperature, as you saw. This time, we're going to repeat the reaction, except we're going to use a 50 degree solution. It's been in a 50 degree water bath. So let's try that. Now we'll put some KMnO4 in a solution of sodium oxalate with acid. This time it's a little warmer. It's been in a 50 degree water bath. So we'll put in five drops. Shake it up a bit. We'll let it sit. Notice the purple color has pretty well disappeared now in the solution. We'll just give it a little shake. And we see the reaction is complete. The rate with the higher temperature was somewhat moderate. So we'll check that box. Now we'll summarize results of these experiments. So as the concentration of a reactant increases, what do you think happens to the rate? Recall that it increases too. The nature of the reactants, if there are no bonds to break and the reaction is simple, the rate is fast or slow. Fast. If there are covalent bonds to break in the reactants, the rate is slow. Adding a suitable catalyst will do what to the rate? Increase, of course. And increasing the temperature will also increase the rate. So this summarizes the results of these experiments.